but I have lost brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Because we are all family. That's right. Mm -hmm. Through these library doors, there are more than books on a shelf. I have a candle on my front porch to display for each murder. I'm at 11. There are people with the will to stand up. You know, it's just time to take a stand. Against a growing problem in Lexington. Been in Lexington all my life and watch it deteriorate slowly, slowly, but surely. Now here we are. Gun violence affecting some personally. We got to stop it. We just got to stop it. It's about taking pride. They say they hope to take back their community. I'm not here to point fingers at nobody. They just don't know how. Our kids and our youth, they have nothing to do. <laughs> So I was like, hey, you know, why don't you just build like soccer courts? These two believe they've got it figured out. You know, this is what I'm talking about. Starting up a league of their own. We saw a need. Taking shots on old tennis courts. Uh, I know Luis used to play there. To get kids off the streets. How you doing, Luis? Hey, what's up, man? And into street soccer. <laughs> and it just gives, you know, the kids something, a distraction, and it keeps them away from other stuff that they shouldn't be doing. It's an area known for violence. My parents wouldn't let me come to this park because, you know, you would hear about shootings and, and stabbings. But still, they're determined to kick the problem. These kids are all out here playing street soccer instead of doing other things that maybe they shouldn't be involved in. Killing two birds with one stone. Playing for the love of Lexington. We do something that we like, which is soccer, and then we, you know, we give something back to the community. For Joseph Espinosa, many summer afternoons are spent working inside Mexi Hollywood restaurant. But on Tuesday... See, that's what I saw. Oh, gracious. Yeah. All it took was a quick glance outside... Really black smoke. The flames are on the other side. ...to realize that this work day... No, it, it wasn't the restaurant, it was upstairs. ...had gone awry. I looked over at the at City Hall, and it's all glass, and I saw the reflection of smoke coming off from the top. Witnesses said heavy fire and black smoke could be seen billowing out of the back side of the apartments that sit above the restaurant. Yeah, just around that corner of that building there, there's a porch upstairs. Little did Espinosa know. And, that, and that's where I saw the fire, the flames going. A man and woman. After we came out of City Hall, I saw a couple ambulances. We're still inside the burning building. So we did rescue two people from a second story uh, apartment. They were trapped in a bedroom and we had to force entry into the building. It makes you feel thankful that they're safe, I guess. And along with the two lives saved, Espinosa also breathes a sigh of relief for something else. I started praying as soon as I came out for their dreams, their hopes. It was, it'd be pretty tough if something happened to the restaurant. Grateful that everyone could walk away and that he'll be able to return to work tomorrow. The restaurant's uh, pretty much it's their dreams. So. In Richmond, Jordan Valines, WKYT. There they go. On Wednesday evening. It's the big news in Lexington. Lowe's is on fire. Yeah, something behind Lowe's is on fire. News of the fire. Check that out. Traveled just as quickly as the black smoke billowing into the bright blue sky. Well, when we got here, there was so much smoke that uh, visibility was very difficult. Crews finally made their way to the origin of the fire in the lumber storage yard behind Lowe's a location that raised red flags for firefighters. What makes it suspicious is the fact that there is no logical ignition source that would have been around where that lumber was stored. Shortly after the fire, investigators spoke with neighborhood kids to see if they knew who may have started the fire. And when we caught up with them a short time later, they told us that they believe it was a boy around their age. My cousin told me that she saw them lit a piece of paper and throw it on the wood and start running down the street. A possible prank? And then they lit the fire. No way else saw them for the rest of the time. That could have cost firefighters their lives. The fire was hot enough that while the crews were uh, putting it out that it actually collapsed one of the metal uh, lumber storage racks. Had they been in the wrong spot when it fell, it would have killed one of them. In Lexington. That, that the whole store was going to catch on fire. Jordan Valines. And everybody was in it. WKYT. From a young age, we're taught not to talk to strangers and certainly never to accept rides from them. <laughs> 
But what happens when lessons learned are put to the test in real life? Parents maybe not have a lot of money to buy them ice creams would jump in the car for an ice cream. For Kathy Tillett... Because I've got two young grandchildren that come and stay with me. This lesson is one she plans to pass on, especially after Thursday. And he said three old men, one of them with the long beard like Duck Dynasty, mm -hmm. they just tried to make me get in their truck. The 10-year-old boy says he was standing near the sidewalk along Dallas Avenue. Here he is. You can talk to him. When three men driving a white pickup truck told him to get in. This is just to let all the boys and girls in Lexington know what happened so that they'll stay safe, okay, baby? And when one man swung the door open and stepped out of the truck. And that's when I started running. And then I jumped the fence. The boy acted on instinct. Right down there, so I just ran because I didn't know who it was. The men drove off, and the 10-year-old made it safely to his grandmother's house nearby. Because they're all out in the street playing at the moment. Grateful that this life lesson was instilled in him. Don't talk to strangers that you don't know, and if they do come around, you try to run as fast as you can. And perhaps even played a part in saving his life. You're a brave boy, honey. You. And you're very clever. In Lexington, Jordan Valines, WKYT. As the sun began to set on Appian Way. I've been living here two years altogether. Yeah. The murmur of concerned neighbors. I mean, I live right next door. It's kind of scary to see that this is what's happening and right where I live. And the questions about what happened. 87 years old is what they said. That's awful. Yeah, it says 87. Continued to rise. As soon as we pulled in, we saw like all the ambulances and the cop cars. Police cars, caution tape and canines filled the parking lot Friday evening after police say an elderly man was found lying in a breezeway. Looked like he had life threatening injuries. Injuries looked to have been caused by some sort of impact weapon or a blunt force trauma. The possibility that the elderly man happened to fall down on his own and injure himself was quickly ruled out after witnesses told police that they saw a man running away from the apartment complex towards Tate's Creek. He was bald and he had a black shirt with a white shirt underneath. He says about 5'9", say so he looked like he was about 30 years old. The random act of violence has residents like Elizabeth Martin. I mean, it was just two doors down. Reeling with disbelief. Could have been my door. You never know when it could be you next time, you know, so. Just know your surroundings. <laughs> surroundings? Yes, I won't be living here anymore. <laughs> that Martin plans to change? Not at all. As soon as she can. Too much going on recently. In Lexington, Jordan Valines, WKYT.